So a lot of people know that the Jews to this very day have a whole host of dietary restrictions that have been imposed on them since, well, ancient times in the book of Leviticus. So what's the real meaning of these laws? Why are these laws given and why is it that we should actually pay any attention to them at all? Well, I'm going to give you one man's explanation as to what these dietary restrictions are really all about. Hi, my name's Todd. Thanks for joining me today. And really, this is fairly simple. If you understand the basic principle of you are what you eat. It's true for our physical body and it's true for our spirit as well. And what I want to show you here is that in this chapter, Leviticus 11, the, for, the forbidden foods fall into basically four categories. There are beasts, there are sea creatures, there are birds, and there are insects. And beasts are about things that we have an affection for, things that we enjoy. The sea creatures are about facts in our life. The birds, they're about thoughts. And the insects, well, that's about, shall we call it, base desires or physical desires. So the forbidden foods that we're, we're going to learn about, well, they're about these different things, you know, loves, facts, desires, thoughts that we should not be consuming. It's like, don't take these things into your spirit because, well, you are what you eat. True for our physical, true for our spiritual as well. So let's go through these four categories and see why it is we're given some of the particulars about them. So let's start with beasts. All right, so beasts, cows good, pigs bad. Why is that? Well, because the rule is it has to have a cloven hoof and it has to chew the cud. If you know anything about chewing the cud, and you probably don't because I had to research it for this video, well, chewing the cud, the animal chews it, swallows it, and then it regurgitates it to chew it some more. These animals are called ruminants. And the idea is that, well, we have to spiritually ruminate. We have to reflect and ponder the things that we like, the things that we have an affection for. It has to have the cloven hoof because this separation is an indication that whatever we have an affection for has kind of sort of a natural purpose, but it has a spiritual as well. So anything we like has to have those two qualities. It has to have a spiritual component to it and we have to think about it. So, you know, take for example, any sort of job you have, right? you have to think about, okay, am I doing this just for the money? Am I a greedy pig? Or am I doing this because I actually want to help people? There's a part of me that's trying to, to do the job honestly, justly, faithfully. I'm trying to be fair in my dealings. Am I thinking about whether I'm being fair in my dealings? That's the kind of beast you want to consume. You don't want to be the greedy pig. Our next category is sea creatures. And this, the requirements here is that it must have scales and it has to have fins. Now, I said earlier that sea creatures are about facts because, well, water is symbolic of truth. So the creatures are facts, knowledge that we've given life to, things that we use. And, well, having fins is about this fact. These facts have to propel us. They have to be you know, propelling us forward on our spiritual journey. And scales, I didn't know this either, but apparently a lot of these fish, they shed their scales naturally, and that's how they get rid of parasites and other sort of, sort of sea garbage off of them. So any fact you're going to take on has to propel you forward, has to be able to clean itself a little bit along the way. A good example of this might be, well, your YouTube feed. How much YouTube information are you gathering? How many which facts are you taking on from random cat videos that are full of completely useless knowledge. You know, remember God in this story is speaking to his chosen people. He's saying, I want you to be different. I want you to be special. And so, well, guess what? Whatever facts you take in need to help you on your journey. Category number three, it's birds. And birds, as I said earlier, about our thoughts. Because, well, you know, our thoughts are kind of above us. And here is a little bit different because we're given a whole list of birds not to eat, and it's not so much about qualities, but we can notice in this list there are basically two things as well that stand out. These birds all eat dead flesh, they eat rotting carcasses, and a bunch of them are nocturnal. 
Eating dead stuff, that's not good. You know, you don't want to eat dead things. But the interesting part is about bats and owls and nocturnal birds. Because, well, what is something that flies by the light of the night? It's flying in darkness. It can't see clearly. So spiritually, not seeing clearly is about, or flying in darkness, it's about taking something that's true and twisting it to our own uses. You know, for example, you take something simple like, oh, I believe that God loves everybody and he loves me just the way I am. True. But then we twist it and we say, well, if God loves me just the way I am, then I don't have to do any self-improvement. Yay. I don't have to actually make any changes to myself. No, not true. But we twist it because, well, we like the idea that we are perfect just the way we are and I don't have to do any change. So when you consume that thought, well, you are eating a bat or an owl or something like that. And our final category here is insects. Really interesting one, I think, because, you know, I don't want to eat a cockroach anyway, but we can eat grasshoppers. All the grasshoppers you want have a, a ton of them. And this is about, apparently, their legs and their hopping. It's, it's um, you know, there's the joints in the right place and they only have four legs. So the idea is that these insects and anything that creeps and slithers, they're about our physical desires. An example here might be, okay, uh, I want to give a girl a kiss, all right? So the hopping is about, well, does that physical desire have a higher component to it? Can it raise itself up? Because a kiss can be two different things. A kiss can be, hey, I just want to go out and hook up because I haven't had any action lately. That's a creature that slithers and has lots of legs and is nasty. Or the, the, the kiss could be something along the lines of, hey, I haven't seen my wife or spouse in a few weeks. I've been on a work trip and I really miss her. It's been, we've been separated for a long time and I will give her a passionate kiss to tell her that I love her and I have missed her and I'm glad to see her again. Those are two different kinds of kisses. There's a kind that, you know, hops itself up because it has something deeper within. So that gives you a quick idea of how the common theme on these forbidden foods, it's really all about, does what you're doing have a spiritual component to it? Is there something more? Because if it doesn't have that, God's saying, don't waste your time with it. Don't take that on because it's not going to help you. You'll turn into a greedy pig or a slithering creature or something flying around in the night. You know, you don't want to be like that. Now, some of you might say, reasonably so, I might add, well, why is it God didn't just tell us this in the first place? Why didn't he tell those poor Israelites, guys, you can eat what you want, but just don't be greedy, right? You know, that would seem to make some sense. Well, Swedenborg explains this thing. The reality was that the people of that era just were not spiritually evolved enough to be able to do it. He says they, they wouldn't be able to follow those rules. They were more like spiritual adolescents who needed to be given a task to do. Here, follow these rules, kind of fake it till you make it. If you can't do the real thing, why don't you at least symbolically enact it out? And that will do for now. And that's why Jesus comes along later and says, Hey, you've been told this, but I'm going to tell you, raise your game. He does this with a lot of different things. Jesus says, you know, hey, you've been told not to commit adultery, but I'm telling you, don't look at a woman lustfully. He's, he's making it spiritual. He's taking it a little bit further. And the same thing applies for all sorts of these Old Testament laws and rules that don't really make a whole lot of sense because, hey, you know, why would God make bacon so tasty if he didn't want us to eat it, right? Obviously, you know, bacon's okay these days because really it's all about don't be greedy when it comes to not eating pigs. So anyway, I hope that helps. I hope that gives you an idea of what these forbidden foods are all about. Ultimately, it's just about making sure we have something spiritual in, in everything that we take on and make part of our lives. Thanks so much for watching. All the best to you. God bless.